I'm drinking, son. Don't judge me. You're about to taste deliciousness. It's tequila time. Tequila time. It's tequila time. And then I take a shot. Hello friends, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making for you some chicken fingers. And more specifically, Ugrela chicken fingers from one of my favorite books. The recipe book from the World of Warcraft, one of my favorite video games. In the picture you can see it's got these nice panko breaded chicken fingers. They've got some fries. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to make some of my homemade fries along with these chicken fingers. The ingredients are relatively simple. We've got some just some Idaho titers. We've got some chicken breast the panko, some oil for the fries, you know, that's really it. I mean, we're going to use a little bit of Parmesan cheese. We're going to use a little bit of mustard and, and what else are we going to use? Just salt and pepper. It's really easy. Something you could cook on a weeknight. No problem for your kids. Who doesn't love chicken and, and titers? Uh, if I don't get too drunk, you might be lucky enough to get one of my favorite recipes that's unique to, to Utah, but we'll see if we get there because today we'll be drinking some to kill ya. One of my favorites, Luna Sewell. So we'll see how far we get with that, but let's get started. That smells nice. It smells like good times. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a bucket of cold water and I'm gonna start cutting these potatoes and putting them into the cold water one so they don't get like that shitty brown color and um, two, I'm gonna salt a little bit and I feel like that helps season it and also pull some of the starch out. I'm gonna talk to you about how to cut the potatoes in just a second. So I'm gonna cut these potatoes and try to make them as even as possible. Keep in mind, they're not gonna all be even, but as I always say, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be. What I like to do is cut off the bottom and then uh, set that aside, you can, you know, Cut it into fry size and then now you have a nice flat surface to work with. I'm just trying to make them as equal as possible. But that flat surface makes it just so much easier. And I'll set the, the lumps aside, stack up these other slices and then just start to cut them into fry size. I'm gonna drop these titers in the bucket. Fuck it. Here we go again. Oh my god, I'm not rinsing the titers. That's a rinse. Fuck them. I should also mention that I leave skin on. Um, some people will peel them. That's your preference. I like the the rustic taste and the texture of a nice fried titer skin. Don't use reason and logic when I'm trying to be an intellectual. Uh, titers. It's tequila time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. French fried titers. Reckon I'm gonna kill you with this here blade. Bring it over to you like that. Ay! It's nice. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, so I'm gonna get my oil hot. I don't know how much I'm gonna use. Just enough to do small batches. I know in previous videos I said, don't crowd the pan. But in this case, when you're frying, it's important you don't crowd the pan because you will kind of like the, the fries will stick together. I'm gonna pull these out of the bowl and the water and pat them dry. 
Then I'm gonna fry them once at like 325. Uh, that helps them just cook all the way through. The outside of the fry gets a bit of a, a fluffy texture and preps it just nicely for the second fry, which browns them and crisps them perfectly. So um, I'm getting my oil up to temperature. I'm gonna pull these out, pat dry them, and then we'll get our chicken ready so that we can put our chicken in the oven. Once our chicken is about five, 10 minutes out, we'll start our fries so that our fries finish right at about the same time as our chicken. Let's go. Tequila time. So, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using chicken breast. Um, I suppose you could use other cuts, but for me, I like to use a chicken breast. I buy the cheapest of the cheap, just because I like to shop on a budget. You're gonna have to cut off this little rib meat. Cut off, I like to trim off any fat pieces. I'm gonna try to get these strips as even as possible. Like I mentioned before with the, with the fries, you get them as even as possible so that the, the cook time ends up being very similar, if not the same. If you buy the cheap stuff like I do, I just give it a little feel just to make sure I don't have any bones. Cut off a little bit of fat if I can and then I place it kind of on its side like this so it gets a little fat and then I cut it in half like that. Because if it's too thick, the cook time will be too long you might end up with some raw pieces. You don't want that. So I'm going to do, uh, I cut it in half and then I'm probably going to cut it in thirds, set it aside. I'll set up my battering station and then we'll get going from there. So let's get cutting. I like to cook from scratch. The reason being is there's a very distinct difference between making it from scratch and having it fresh versus getting that frozen shit that ends up being dry and just really average. Um, and by the way, like I'm gonna knock this out for real in probably an hour-ish at most. And that's from scratch. So um, it's, it's pretty easy compared to buying the frozen shit and doing whatever you do with it in the oven or your air fryer. Um, trust me when I tell you, this recipe is best made from scratch. Oh, I was hoping it'd come out like a switchblade. Didn't work. Let me try it again. Yeah. Nope, this is not gonna happen. So, um, I've got myself this like really inexpensive $5 thermometer. This will help you to get the exact temperature of your oil. So I want it to be a 325 and then we'll do the first, um, the first fry. I should turn it on though. Had a bit of tequila today. All right, we're about 280. Gonna keep going. In the meantime, I think I'm gonna pull my uh, fries out of the bucket, put them on a towel and dry them out, and then we'll do the first fry. Check. It's tequila time. And then I take a shot. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start pulling these Titers out and start drying them out on this paper towels and then our oils ready we'll do our first fry I'll set them out spread them out so they don't stick and then we'll get our chicken breaded and we'll start to finish this up not gonna take too much long we're almost done that's a lot tighter goddamn son of a bitch We're in Utah. This is how we do. Hoo wee! Get the sheep. Gonna rustle us up some grub. Get ready for dinner. Goddamn shit! So I've got my fries frying for the first fry. I'm going to kind of brown off these panko crumbs with some garlic powder. Um, I need to preheat some oil. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon, boop. And then uh, once that's heated up, it gets nice and glossy in the pan. I'm gonna put in my panko crumbs, some garlic powder, and brown that up. My crumbs are nice and brown and done. 
Um, I need to set them aside, not set them aside, but put them in the vessel that you're going to be breading in, your breading station, and then you got to let them cool for a minute. Not too long, just so that they're not so hot that they're going to melt the other ingredients we're going to put in, which one of those ingredients is Parmesan cheese. So um, I'm going to let those cool for a minute. So I'm just going to line this cookie sheet with some foil, put on these racks. I'm going to make my batter, which I'm going to bread these chicken with, and then put them on the rack and put them in the oven. The reason they're on a rack is because it allows air to go underneath them and cook them a little more evenly. This is Parmigiano Reggiano. You can put any Parmesan. I chose to splurge because I want these to be extra. So I got some Parmigiano Reggiano. Get whatever, like, get little triangle like a fresh parmesan if you buy it pre-shredded it has that potato starch and it just doesn't melt as good so that's why I like to use a, a fresh wedge so it doesn't matter what brand it is as long as it's not pre-shredded that matters so I'm gonna shred about how much refer to the recipe it says a quarter cup I doubled the recipe because I got a lot of chicken so we're gonna get a half cup in here which is probably gonna be all this wedge, the rest of it. That looks like a half cup. A little bit more. There it is. Alrighty. I'm gonna mix this bitch up. That smells right. I just wanna yeah, I can snort that. Oh my god. You ever snorted panko? I'm gonna today. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is putting together an egg. I doubled the recipe, so I'm doing two eggs, a couple tablespoons of mustard, a couple tablespoons of flour, and then some salt and pepper. So this is gonna be my batter that I dip the chicken in first and then take it over to the panko, the toasted panko, and then get it ready for the oven. So, so I'm just gonna free pour what I think is about two tablespoons. Unless you're baking, it's not a science. You know, use your best judgment or you can use exact measurements, but I find it more fun just to go with your feel. One, two tablespoons, and one for good measure. Blip, you're welcome. It says salt and pepper to taste. I'm gonna do probably a teaspoon, I'm guessing. <laughs> that might not be a teaspoon. Yes. This mixture feels a little thick to me, so I'm gonna add another egg just to thin it out. All right. Now this is starting to get, starting to get loose. Oof. Not a kid friendly channel. I'm gonna start dipping this chicken. Dipping this chicken, put it in the panko, put it on the pan, and then into the oven we go. And then we'll do our second fry on the, on the fries, yes. You know, battered chicken. They say to have have one hand for the dry and one hand for the wet. I don't pay attention to that shit. I just kind of do whatever feels right. So you can see, it coats really easily. You know, I've got some flour and the eggs and it just, the, the panko adheres to it so easily, which is why I like this recipe. When you're doing um, like a floured fried chicken, for me, I tend to double coat it. So I put it in the egg mixture, into the flour, back to the egg mixture and back. This one I feel like the panko crumbs just adhere perfectly to a nicely kind of egg batter coated mixture. And then this is gonna go into the oven for about, I think 15 or 20 minutes. You're just gonna wanna wait until it's nice and golden brown. The, the second fry is gonna take, what, 
three, maybe five minutes again. The only difference with the, with the second fry is you gotta cook it a little higher heat. The, the first fry was 325. The second fry is gonna be 375. These chicken tenders are gonna cook in the oven, like I said, for about 15, 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Easy money. So I'm gonna put these beautiful bitches into a preheated oven at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Oh God, I'm drunk. So those are cooking for 15 to 20 minutes. We're gonna put the fries in when they got about five minutes left. So stay tuned. It's coming to a theater near you. More shots! That's it. So we're cooking these a little bit hotter for the second fry. What I should have done was taken this little scoopity scoop and dropped them in, but what I'm looking for here is golden brown finishing crispy deliciousness. So this is going to be quick, maybe three to five minutes. And when they're done, that's about the time the chicken's going to be done. So we'll come back in just a minute. So this is the second fry where it's 375, about three and a half minutes in and they're browning up nicely. We're about to pull these out. Our chicken's almost done in the oven. God damn, this shit's gonna be delicious. I brought in my son because he's a homegrown Utah. I'm not from Utah originally, but he is. And we're gonna make a sauce that is native to Utah that you would eat with fries and chickens. What you gotta make with your taters is some Utah fry sauce. Corman's gonna teach us how to do that. You're gonna wanna get the mayo. Three quarters of the bowl. And then about a quarter of ketchup. You always gotta shake it up first. You, you got to shake It'll it up. It'll be all like liquidy. Right, vinegary and gross. Yeah. More, more, and stop. And then about half of what you just did. Yellow mustard. You gotta shake it up. You have to shake it up. Get the, the cutest the cute little one. fork you've ever seen. That's what they do in Utah. They get the cutest little fork you've ever seen and then stir it up. That's what we do in Utah. Oh, he's aggressive. All right. That's beautiful, That's son. Awesome. That's beautiful. And Voila. what do we have? This, this is, is fry, fry sauce. sauce from Utah. You're welcome. Look at this beauties! <sighs> yes. So we're gonna try this, see how it turned out. We did it, it ended up being about 20 minutes, maybe 19, but you gotta gauge it for yourself. I'm gonna dip it in that Utah special. Man, this shit is delicious. You're welcome. Sauce, sauce, sauce. <laughs> you rolling? Tighters. Willy Wonka bikes, everything he makes. <laughs> Satisfying and delicious. Second chicken. Oh boy. Dildos, yeah. But there's just a very distinct difference of making it from scratch and having it fresh. Just try to act normal. Here we go. Man, you feeling good? Relax. Having a good time? Tequila time! Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back. Ain't much an old country boy like me can't have. It's early to rise, early in the sack. Thank God I'm a country boy. It's on the riddle. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle. Thank God I'm a country boy. 
Get glow stick. Do, 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 do. So anyways, I'm out of tequila, so I uh, got some vodka. Here we go, we're doing this. That's too delicious to talk about. <laughs>